welcome to round seven of the Enduro World Series. We are here in North Star, California for the North Star Enduro, and we are with, when in California, Curtis Keane and his very special new specialized. Now, Curtis, we saw this bike last time out in Whistler. It was under the stealthy, not so stealthy wrap. And um, yeah, tell us about, well, I guess about your history with this bike. When did you first ride one of these? Well, this bike's a long time coming. Well, kind of like a three-year cycle, so it's been in the works. Uh, I tested it quite a ways back, and then obviously we kind of kept it under wraps with our, our wrap jobs and whatnot. So it was always a plan to la launch it here. I was actually back here in North Star in June. We had the media launch, so we had everyone from Pink Bike to European journalists and all that, and they were riding this along with uh, some other bikes. So they got to ride it. We got to ride it even more. Um, the park was not really open, just a couple trails. So it was definitely spent some time on it then, and then obviously at home. So trying to keep it as quiet as I could, but it's uh, it's been awesome to launch it and people are stoked on it. So it's good to see. Now, just visually, before we get into any numbers or anything, this does look very, very similar to the downhill bike that Loic Bruni Finales are riding at the minute. Is that the case? Is it sort of based on that? Absolutely. Like what we learned on the DH bike, kind of we applied to this bike as well, but a little different, a bit of a hybrid. We want to pedal, a little less travel, but how it performs under braking and most of all the square edge hits. Um, that's what we were trying to achieve and we did. And I think people are realizing that because once you do ride it on proper terrain, it's much different than any other trail bike we've ever had. 29 inch wheels, 170 travel front and rear, full carbon fiber, is that right? That's right, uh, carbon only frame, two nine wheels only as of right now. Uh, 170 mil front and rear. The S Works comes with the carbon links, which is 250 grams lighter. Um, it's a mini downhill bike, but man, still climbs really well. Um, do big days, but when you ride this bike, you're riding it for the downs, that's for sure. Well, that's what's interesting, I guess, because it seems like modern enduro bikes have got burlier and burlier, but the seating positions have improved so that climbing isn't as big an ordeal on them. Exactly, you can still climb 6,000 feet or whatever. You're not going to You could, maybe. I don't think I could, but... Just keep on drinking more Red Bull or coffee or whatever. Uh, obviously, it doesn't climb like an Epic or a full-on XC bike, but that's not why you're riding this bike. This bike is, you want to party on the down, so you can take it to bike parks, whatever. I have downhill tires on, I mean, in coil, rear suspension. It's When I used to race downhill back in the day, this bike is light years better than my downhill bike in 2008, so it's crazy. Um, in terms of adjustability, it's sort of a fashion that's coming and going at the minute. Has this got any adjustments that you can make to it? Yep, the same uh, little eyelet down on the rear shock. It's a uh, 64.3 down to 63.9. So a slight adjustment. The BB goes from 352 to 347. So just a little bit. It's still long and slack, um, but just, you know, maybe people live in different terrains. So just enough. And four sizes, that's right as well. And you've sort of gone away from naming them small, medium, large. Yeah, we're kind of, people have different styles of riding, whether uh, who they are, where they live. So it's an S2, 3, 4, and 5. Um, I'm on a 5. It's the first bike that I feel like it truly fits me. So it's, that's as big as they go with them. That's yeah. as big as this bike comes. Yeah, it's pretty big. It's a 5.11 uh, reach. And then the wheelbase is 13.10 with the fork I have. That's big. Yeah, it's, a, it's a mini boat, so, but it's, it's good. And you're on uh, Olin's as well, full Olin's. Yeah, Olin's front and rear. Uh, got the reverb axis, axis uh, drivetrain. Um, I'm super happy, yeah. Axis drivetrain, and you mentioned your old downhill bike and stuff. I mean, axis still is like, it's Star Wars stuff, isn't it? How have you got on with that? That's a massive thing, isn't it? The Bluetooth shifting. The seat post was easy. That was like mega easy. Uh, the, the shifting, when you... After a couple of days, you're fine, right? Just riding at home, doing all that, it's easy. Racing takes a little bit to get used to. For me, uh, Tyler Moreland from SRAM gave me a good tip on lever position, and I mounted the shifter separately, and it brought it down. So it's kind of when you're anaerobic and you want to do those quick shifts, That's you're just on autopilot with or you're on XTR or SRAM, and the click, click. So after racing Whistler and then riding it more, I'm pretty much, I feel like I'm pretty dialed for the most part. So you've got the actual shifter on a separate mount as opposed to, because it can mount underneath the brake lever with SRAM, can't it? Yeah, exactly. So I mounted on a separate clamp, which pushed it down maybe like three mil or something, and then it went in a bit more. So 
everyone's different, you know, figure out what they like and don't like. And seat wise as well, it looks like quite a small seat pushed quite far forward, is that? Yeah, I just want a bit further forward just for climbing. That's it, you know, oh, okay. that's it. I mean, it is a pretty good size reach, but I do have a 35 mil stem on it. So that's kind of what feels right for climbing for me. I got kind of long legs. And rem file, bar and stem, what length is the stem and what your bars currently width wise? 35 mil stem and 30 mil rise bars. Yep, 770 mil uh, wide bars, carbon, of course, um, 170 mil cranks, aluminum rims, always now, mm -hmm. too fat for a carbon. Uh, yeah, man. Would you, ever, would you ever go back to a carbon rim? Because it's one of the things that it really, it really splits the elite group in Enduro World Series these days. Is like some, some people swear by the carbon fiber rims, other people prefer the alloys because you can get away with a bit more, maybe. I think the big thing for me is alloy. If you do flat, it, you can still keep on punishing it, right? Brake wise, then, what are you running in terms of brakes and rotor size pads? Uh, SRAM got me the new codes uh, 200 rear and a 220 front. 220, really? that's big, isn't it, for an enduro? It's awesome. <laughs> uh, I come from Aguras, which are awesome brakes. Uh, these are, they've really impressed me so far. So I raced Whistler and didn't think about my brakes once. I braked a lot. <laughs> especially on day two but uh it was never like a thing like i would whether i had enough braking power or whatever so it really impressed me so far yeah neat little garmin mount as well just in your stem where's that from uh edge makes that oh. yeah just throw the garmin clean simple you know if you are using it so um easy to look at now speaking of easy to look at the finish on this bike is really really it's actually sort of a bit hypnotic tell us a bit more about that well, Brad Benedict was telling me that when they do this the, for the final finish, they actually apply like a saran wrap in a way, right? So they wrap the bike and it does its thing with the uh, with the coating and all that. They do that, it stays on for X amount of time, and they peel it off, and that's kind of what happens. So every frame actually is a little bit different. Okay. It's the same concept, of course, you know, but everyone's going to have its own little unique unique thing so it's kind of cool yeah and specialized obviously pushing really hard lately with their swap technology which is all kinds of i guess the sort of stuff you'd carry in a pack or on your body but secreted around the bike so what has this got uh just the swat now on this enduro is actually a little bit smaller than a stump jumper so we have the swat on the down tube and then on on the uh, bottle cage itself is just the uh, swat allen tool Eight six five four Torx three and a little flathead screwdriver. So for those unfamiliar with it, it's I'm sorry, specialized for want of a better word, a bit like a cupboard that yeah, you can sure. you can store stuff in your down tube. Yeah, when it first came out, I made a joke of it. Of course, uh, I knew it was awesome. We tested it before, so those guys hate carrying stuff. I hate carrying backpacks. Uh, you know, I threw a, a donut in there, and <laughs> so you can do whatever you want. Yes, yeah. um, but I use uh, I'll throw my tube and little little thing there with uh, zip ties and CO2s and sometimes like a small jacket, a real like rain jacket and throw it in there. Um, in terms of then, I mean, all you pros say that you're not fussy about bikes and then you dig a little deeper and there's something that you're really fussy about. What what would you say is the most Curtis thing on that bike? What are you really sort of pernickety over? Anyone that sits on my bike is the brakes for sure. So how do you mean? I'm, I'm weird, man. I'm just I'm stuck in my old ways. So just my brakes are so far out, and they're really touchy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. They're kind of they're pretty far out. They maybe got a little less extreme, but they just hang way out there. For why do I do that? I don't know. I'm just like I said, I'm stuck in my ways. Uh, aside from that, I just don't like suspension bottoming out. Other than that, like I kind of you yeah, know. just sit up a wee bit. No, I just don't want it to bottom out like a harsh bottom out. So as long as it kind of ramps up, I tend to run a lot of pressure or spring rate so it's mainly the brakes man that's my mainly thing brakes, yeah right. yeah so how are you feeling then um before we head into the north star enduro at the weekend because this is your home territory and i know you're not a fan of the rain and we have come to yeah. what feels like the last place on earth that it may rain if it rains here i am solely <laughs> responsible for the bad weather the last you three to, you need to stop man yeah, don't worry i'm i'm done after this one so uh yeah this is i lived in I grew up in Northern California, so I grew up riding here uh, time and time during the summers. Very comfortable, obviously California, dry, hot, dusty, loose. The hotter it is, uh, the rockier, dustier, I love it. So that's not the, what, what we've been racing in. So I'm happy to be here. I'm comfortable. Um, I come here once a year, the last few years, just to race the uh, California Enduro Series. So I'm excited. Yeah, 
some friends here, some sponsors, and just it's cool to see everyone come. Um, I introduced Steven from CES to Chris Ball a few years ago, and they linked up, and Chris kind of saw it. I thought it would be different, unique, aside from everything we've been doing over the years, and that's why the Enduro World Series is awesome because we go to all these different locations, different types of terrain, and at the end of the year, you have your, your champion, so you got to be able to do anything and everything, and this race is going to challenge people. And then finally then, just between you and me, there's a lot of very, there's I think there's five very, very fast guys at the front of the elite men's field this weekend. Yeah. Who's your money on? Richie, man. Richie? Yeah, man, Richie. Well, he was here last year too, so he's ridden here before. Richie's on it, and Richie loves dried, dusty, rocky stuff. He's a brute force, so as long as his bike stays in one piece, uh, he's. I think he's a man. Of course, Martin's going to go quick, and Sam, so... Uh, my money's on him. Okay, well, there you go. Curtis, thank you very much for bringing your bike in to let us see it. And uh, we look forward to seeing you this weekend. Don't forget, you can follow all the race action on our live race feed. That's on EnduroWorldSeries.com and on all our social media channels. Should be a good one.